How to set up a data feed. Now, setting up a merchant data feed can be a complicated task. It's going to require that you involve someone at your company with programming skills and coding knowledge, maybe somebody in the IT department. If you're very technical, you may be able to do this as well, but it's likely you're going to need to get somebody else involved that's an actual programmer. You can also outsource the job to a developer. Now, it's really worth the effort to go through the trouble of creating the data feed because it automates the process of delivering product information to your affiliates. It also allows you to make frequent updates very quickly, and it adds a huge value to ha for affiliates to have as much information as possible available to them and delivered in a really great way that makes it easy for them to get that information. So you want to make it accessible to people because affiliates have varying levels of technical knowledge. Some have people doing things for them. Some are ex-programmers. Some are just moms who have minimal HTML skills. So you want to offer the data feed in a variety of formats. You want to offer a variety of delivery methods. And you definitely want to include documentation. You want people to know exactly what's in the data feed and how they can handle it. So, okay, let's go over some of the basic information that you need to share with your programmer or for you to program this to get started on your data feed. You're going to need to use a delimited text file, not a comrade comma separated value file and S as CSV. So you don't want to use commas or semicolons. There's a lot of things to avoid. You want you want to use tab characters to separate your columns and row delimiters should either be standard Windows line breaks, which means using the return key or a standard Unix line break but there's no return on that. So try to avoid using things like quotation marks and strings. And if quotes are part of a product name, which is really common for merchants because some products names include sizes like 50 inch plasma TV or uh, 23 inch monitor, use that as a text qualifier. So be sure to remove column and row delimiter, delimiters from the content feed itself. Although these provide key information for the structure of the feed, they appear in errors in the as errors in the actual content feed. And don't use any characters other than numbers 0 through 9 and letters A to Z. You can use both capital and lowercase, but don't use any of the funky characters and symbols that are available on your computer. And use only ASCII code in the feeds. So now that you're doing the formatting, you want to make sure that all the files have the same number of columns for every single record. You can use an XML format. It's also acceptable, but only if the data is provided to people via web services like SOAP or REST, something like that. You want to compress the large data files using multiple formats or a universal compression format like gzip. Not all affiliates are using the same operating system, so if you deliver it via WinZip, that might not be something that people can open up. So here we're talking again about delivering the data feed. You need to offer multiple, multiple methods for affiliates to be able to download the feed. They need to be able to do it via FTP or HTTP on your site, or again, via web services like XML or SOAP. So you want to include the data as part of the file name so that affiliates will be alerted to whether or not they have the most current version. So you want to have the date and all that information in the file name so that they're not downloading something that they don't need to be downloading. Set a regular schedule for updating the data feed so affiliates will know when they need to get the latest version. So if you do it every Friday, keep to that schedule so affiliates can expect it on that day and go and look for it. Now consider that affiliates reside in different time zones and it may be tricky to find a time that is a little bit slower for all your affiliates. 
but you want to you don't want to pick the busiest time of the day and have affiliates downloading at that time you want to pick something that's a little slower business hours the bottom line to this is that not all affiliates will want a data feed or take advantage of it but a lot of them will and by providing this information they'll have the option to use it if they choose and for you on the merchant end the more you can automate tasks within your program the easier it is for you to make it successful.